have our speaker here with us who will be taking us through that. Actually, is a, a digital smart young developer. Yes. And uh, yes, from Nigeria. So let's put our hands together as so we welcome Godwin Oj Ojebi. <laughs> welcome. Hi everybody, thank you very much for having me. By the way, my friend over here dragged me here. Um, she was like, I, I don't really uh, go out to speak much, but I, I talked about this at WordCamp Lagos early this year, and uh, she was like, there's a WordCamp in Mombasa this year, and I'm like, okay, let's, let's take the version two of the talk down there. So um, I'm going to be talking about WordPress and the Internet of Things, and uh, my name is uh, Godwin Ojebi. You can reach me on Twitter there, but uh, it shows uh, the faceless man as the name. Uh, he said something about it yesterday. So um, I I don't know. Uh, should I call myself a developer, an engineer? I don't know. I just I'm just hungry for knowledge. That's uh, that's that's the thing. I am like a nomad, and uh, I lead the uh, software development team for FTR Canada. I lead the so IOIT team and web engineering team for Industrial Matrix in Canada, and uh, I do WordPress consulting for BBD Accessories in Trinidad and Tobago. I just do. I just love this thing. Like anything that has to do with code, I'm like all into it. So let's get into uh, WordPress on the Internet of Things. The first thing uh, I'm going to talk about uh, is uh, the things I'm going to be talking about. The Internet of Things, using WordPress with the Internet of Things, and uh, building IoT product. In the first one, we're going to uh, demystify IoT, and then the second one, uh, we're going to talk about using WordPress, uh, building smart stuff with WordPress, and IoT, and uh, the third one, we're going to talk about building IoT products for uh, investors, developers, why, what you should invest in, why you should invest in it. IoT is like new in Africa. It's not like, we don't have companies that build many of these stuff. We, the people who use them, import them, and all those things. Like, uh, so I think it's the right time for us to get into it. Because uh, imagine you have the knowledge to build these things. Like, imagine you, you, you invest yourself into it and you know how to do it. Many people live here and work in other countries. We're in the digital age. It's coming, it's, it's, it's getting here little by little. And you don't have to be at a place. You don't have to have a skill. Like, you, like you don't have to 100%, like, you don't have to look at a skill that is valuable at your location. You can get something that people will pay for for you to do remotely. So um, the next thing is Internet of Things. This term, Internet of Things, was coined by uh, Kevin Ashton in 1999. He, 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 thought, he thought about it like, OK, we're trying to connect things. We're trying to make things get connected together. Things like, uh, OK, like cheers. When people ask me, well, how do you, how do you how did you get into Internet of Things, or how did you like stumble upon this stuff? I tell them, okay, there was a day I went out, and then somebody was calling me, trying to know where I was, and my phone went off. And then I stood up from the chair I was seated on, and I sat on another one. And then I thought, okay, what if this chair can actually tell somebody that, okay, he just got here, and he just sat here? <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird, right? But it's possible. Everything is connected to the internet now. Everything. So, um, Internet of Things is actually like a, an ecosystem where sensors, devices, equipment are connected to a network. It's very simple. Don't look at the complex definitions. It's just connecting things to the internet. Like, tables are connected to the internet, houses are connected to the internet, cars are connected to the internet, and uh, chairs are connected to the internet, anything. 
things connected together to the internet. Well, um, how many of, I, I think I saw that there are a lot of uh, network professionals here and networking students. Yeah, you're familiar with uh, TCP IP, right? Okay, so every device connected to the internet has an IP address for recognizing or for knowing what the device is and it, it, has, it shows a lot of data about the device. So with the use of that, that's, why, that's how this thing is possible. As you can see in the picture, we have bulbs that are connected to the internet, we have TV, we have phone, we have almost everything connected to the internet. And uh, this is like a very huge right now. We have a lot of people that this is their life's work. They are dedicated to making things that are smart. They are dedicated to making things that are connected. Now, there are uh, disadvantages and advantages, and uh, we're going to get there, but these are places, uh, these are the manifestations of IoT. We have the smart city, industrial application, connected mobility, smart home, uh, entertainment, wearables, and then the health and fitness. Uh, there are devices that uh, you can just, maybe like just wear a watch, and uh, the watch checks what's, what's wrong with you, or the watch monitors you and reports to an app. I know many people have seen something like that before, heard about something like that, right? See? So Internet of Things is, uh, is something I think, it's, it's a very huge idea. It's something that the potentials are limitless. The things that can happen, the betterness that this thing can bring to our life, it, you cannot limit it. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about predictions, forecasts, and ma uh, market estimates. Okay, so this is the first slide. Okay, this stuff started in uh, 19, like it started way before 1999, but someone put a name to it in 1999, right? So, uh, and then like, this is a forecast that the global IoT market uh, will grow from $157 billion in 2016 to $457 billion by 2020. You, it is, the good thing is right now, we, f we all have a way of like uh, staying in a location and doing something for people in different locations. So it doesn't have to be, you don't have to say, okay, uh, it's not here yet, uh, I don't have to know about it, I don't have to look at it or stuff like that. You just, just take a look, it is, it is really taking over. Okay, a lot of people were like, uh, IoT is dangerous because uh, when things that are close to me are connected, my data is out there and all those things, but we're going to get back to, uh, we're going to get to the data part, and then you see that uh, every technology that has ever been invented or everything that, have, that has ever been created has, uh, how do I call it, has like security loopholes that are many, and then over time, some people worked on it, to make sure that the loopholes are reduced. And I used to tell people something, don't ever think you can stop hackers. No, just think you can protect yourself from them. So the next thing is uh, the hardware and the software and the services. Uh, it will generate this much revenue. And if you look at these statistics, they're not fake. They are true. This industry is going to grow like hugely. If you see a uh, very vital industry globally. If you can't get in, like the industries are very, very well connected to this. I met a data scientist here today, and she's very awesome. She would be able to connect to this. Like the, all the data that I got in from here, that's what they do, that's what they manage. And my friends say uh, the new oil or the new gold is data. People make money with data. Data comes from here. Okay, imagine you have a car that is smart, connected to the internet, and then uh, this car is definitely going to know your house. It's going to know where you walk. It's going to know where you eat. This car probably knows everything about you. That is data. So uh, the next thing we're going to talk about benefits. Uh, the first one is automation and control. It helps us automate things like so much. I was talking to somebody about uh, something last week. I was talking about uh, a smart diaper that you wear for your kids. 
don't worry, I'm still gonna talk about it blend, like at, by the end. Like uh, I'm going to use it like as a case study for investing and building these stuff. Okay, so the thing is, uh, kids are so hard to like manage or control or something because they're just growing. So what if you wear them a diaper and then you have an app that tells you your kid is awake, your kid is crying, your kid is moving, that means your kid doesn't have to get lost. So there are products like that, and then you discover that it helps you, like, uh, that's, that's a basic uh, example for automation and control. You'll be able to, like, automate simple tasks. Like, uh, now, people don't have to, like, it's going to get here, it's going to get popular. People don't have to really go to the hospital to do medical checkup. The thing is that uh, the reason why people don't really talk about stuff like this in Africa much is because people, the audience feel uh, we don't have, people won't use this thing if you do them here and all those things, but come to think of it. Who says you have to build for here right now? So the next thing is time. IoT saves time. Just like we're talking about uh, not having to go to uh, the hospital for medical checkup, you can be in your house or in your office and then you get diagnosed. If anything is wrong, then you go see the doctor. But just that uh, if you have uh, a serious illness, the advancement has not got into that, like, that stage. It's still evolving, it's still growing big, like that. Then uh, the next thing is information. When we get the data and we process it, you see, okay, kids in this area wake up by 2 a.m. Why? Many kids in this area pee seven times a day, but why? We get information from the data that we get from them. And uh, then the next thing is money. You make money with data. You make money with anything that is, uh, let me see, anything that is new, anything that is like, and IoT is like, oh, how many of us here are developers? Let me paint a scenario. Okay, when you first started web development, people will look at you like you're a god, right? <laughs> they will be like, uh, okay, what are you doing? Like, seriously? It, it looks like a, it's a very big deal and it's something that is very hard and only you can do it. And they're going to pay hugely for that. That's the truth, right? But uh, with time, when there are more developers and they see that, okay, this thing is becoming common, the price starts reducing. So, like, right now in Africa, if you have an IoT idea or build an IoT product or maybe <coughs> work with people in the IoT stuff or come up with something, people won't use it. It will be there. And uh, then, with time, these people get to adopt it. We're Africans, we, we move to things, like we move from something to another thing. Once we start hearing about stuff, we want to try it. When we like it, we keep it. So I feel me, for me, I don't know, like it, it may not work everywhere, but for me, if I'm trying to make a product to be used in Africa or anything, a software or anything, I don't think of now. I think of the future. But to do something like that, it, doesn't have, it has to be a product that you don't have to spend hugely on. Because uh, in this continent, I don't think there's, a, there, there's, no, there's no room for, countries to, uh, sorry, for companies to run on negative balance and all those things. So you have to, you have to do something that uh, you don't have to spend much on so that you don't go bankrupt. Then better quality of life. IoT help us like, live a good life. Then the next thing is uh, the risks. Now, the data is much, very, very much. And uh, the bad guys are looking for data. So, so you, have to just, uh, you have to just be able to secure the data. But the thing is, the good news is that uh, ethical hackers are evolving every day. These guys, as vulnerabilities are coming out, as our security issues are coming out, these guys are trying to fix it. Like every day. These guys are learning every day. These guys are working every day. So uh, if you're scared with the data security stuff, all you have to do is uh, 
Maybe try to get into it. See what's happening. Nothing is, uh, nothing is really easy until you just like maybe look into it and try to see how it's done. That's, that's the thing. Then the second thing is privacy issues. Uh, yeah, that's, that's very important. Privacy part is very important because like I said earlier, if you have a car that is smart in your house, drives you to work, drives you everywhere, or you have a smart bed. How many of us have heard of smart beds? Okay, uh, I don't have, oh, that should be on my laptop, okay. Well, these beds knows when you sleep, they know how to make you sleep on time. <laughs> you, should, you should Google them, like, it's, I don't know who thought about that idea, it's a very funny stuff, like, so there are these beds that, like, when you try to adjust your body, they try to condition the bed so that you don't, like, so that you don't wake up, like, and then someone made one for babies. That one is very expensive, actually. But Google gives it as like a gift to their employees in the US, I think. OK, so when your baby is crying and you put the baby on bed, it like cuddles the baby, like, like shakes the baby to you. The baby keeps quiet, and then she sleeps. I was supposed to have a video on my, but I don't know, maybe when we get to the last slide. So then uh, that kind of device actually knows your baby. He knows everything about your baby. That's the thing. So the privacy is like, uh, I don't know, is on the balance. You should not allow that data get out of your network because people can use it against you. Then uh, the next thing is the complexity. IoT is a complex stuff. And uh, if something has like maybe 18 processes, okay, like imagine you try to achieve something, you try to do something, and uh, all you have to do is just two things to achieve it. Now you know that the only, two, the only thing you have to do is secure those two things so that nobody else can get through to those things and uh, use that to actually disturb what you're trying to do. But imagine you have 18, 20 processes. There are plenty loopholes. Plenty of things that people can get through to you from. Then the next one is uh, the diverse, diversity of niche providers. Okay, it's just like where we have the manifestation. We have uh, the industrial internet of things. Now everybody's saying the internet of babies. Everybody's saying the internet of, like, there are plenty of niche for this thing. Some people are doing smart homes. Some people are building smart devices for the health. Some people are doing smart devices for the uh, industrial sector. And then, uh, confusion on where to get value. We're all doing, uh, like, somehow, uh, everything we do, it's not, uh, we may do them because of passion, but somehow, the end result is either, like, it's, it's like getting something out of it, making money, like, right? We all want to make money with what we do. Okay, like, uh, there's, how many of us know about uh, SpaceX? Elon Musk's company. Oh, okay. So, like, he was doing this stuff because of passion. But right now, they're saying, uh, well, we have to make money. So, people do stuff because of passion, but in the end, they somehow think about it, and they're like, okay, somehow I have to find a way of making money with this thing. So, if you cannot pinpoint that, okay, at five years into this thing, I'm going to be able to get return on investment, the ROI, then why do it? Okay, so these are the challenges, these are the things that people think about before getting into this thing. But the thing is, uh, it is possible to actually overcome these things. And I'm not saying that uh, you have to do IoT on a large scale, I'm just talking about like what you can achieve with it, things you can do with it. Now we're going to get to using it with WordPress, like the things people have done with WordPress and IoT, like how IoT can help you in WordPress. Uh, okay, so uh, you can just break it down to three components. The power component, the input, and then the output. That's all. There's the input, there's the output, and then there's something that powers it. So they made a chip for the three main components. I'm not going to be going uh, too deep into a little bit also. 
Then the next thing is uh, these were sample projects that were submitted to Little Bits, and uh, you sh just check out the sites, you see all these ones. Then uh, the good thing is they have a WordPress plugin. If you know how to use WordPress, you could download it, experiment with it, see how it works. And you could buy these stuffs and have them shipped over. Then my personal favorite is, uh, okay, that's the site. That's where you can see everything about them. My own personal favorite is Particle. It was formerly known as PAC. And uh, it's a platform co for connecting IoT devices to the web. And they have everything, the SDKs, the IDEs, the ability to connect to a Wi-Fi or cellular network, because uh, it's not every device that can connect uh, via cellular, and it's not every device that can connect via uh, Wi-Fi, because it's not like you can't make them to do it, but everything you build or everything you see, some people sat down to think about how it affects the human being. Uh, let's say you're making a smart, uh, let me see. Okay, I saw something in a movie. I don't know if it will ever be possible, but. Imagine you have a smart shirt that you can, it can just change its own color. Like. So, you, you, so I don't have to wear more than one shirt. And like developers, we know how hard it is to dress up. Like seriously, it is very hard. So imagine I have a shirt that can change its own color and change it from uh, maybe round neck to V neck. So I saw that in a movie and uh, so, okay, something like that, if it's gonna be connected to anything, it cannot use cellular or Wi-Fi because of the rays or radiation. That's why they say don't put your phone here or don't put your phone in your back pocket, like the radiation gives uh, back cancer, I don't know. Like, so you, 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 you have to think of what is the proper approach. Like uh, many people, many of the smart things that are out there for babies, they don't do long-term tracking. They only do Bluetooth, then in the house you get to report, but it is possible to suppress these radiations, but I don't know why many companies are not trying to research into it. By the way, I'm actually working on a smart diaper currently. I'll show you. Okay, so particle, this is my personal favorite. This is very awesome. They have hardware, they handle connectivity, they have a cloud, and then their apps. You can build your apps there. You can buy address from them. You can do like almost everything. They have everything, all the connectivity modules, Wi-Fi, cellular, Bluetooth, mesh, everything. Then uh, this, is, uh, this is their devices. I think the common one is the Raspberry Pi. Almost everybody knows that if you know generation. What is missing in this thing? What can I add to this? Like, IoT is like a, a very huge thing. Building a smart product is very huge, it's very challenging. So all you have to do is, okay, I want to make a light that switches on when people walk by. It's definitely going to need a motion sensor, right? So make a bulb, make a motion sensor, uh, sorry, buy a motion sensor, connect that together. Let's say that's one device. All it does is just uh, light up when people walk by, and then you test it, it works. But do you know that uh, that bulb collects a data? Anybody can guess what that is? It knows when you walk by that place every day. That's data. The bulb knows that you're going to be in that place. It knows when you've been in that place. It knows when you have been there. And you can use that data for something else. Like, okay, if this bulb knows when I'm here, why don't I tell this bulb that, okay, every time I pass here, I am going to make coffee. Tell my espresso maker that I am coming. So you see, think about that, and then from that, you then say, okay, uh, since that is working, what else can I add to this thing? Think like that, like that, like that. And give it like five years of thinking about a product. That's how great products are made. People keep thinking like, what can we add to this thing to improve? How do we make it great? How do we make it do more? And then the more things you add, the more the value that it adds to the society and the more money you make. I don't like talking about making money, but uh, that fact is there. We can't deny it. So the more money you make, the, more, the bigger the product is, the bigger the company is. So you build from scratch, small, 
Or the second approach is uh, use somebody else's product. Like, I'm not saying steal a product or reverse engineer a product, no. Look at somebody else's idea that is solving a problem and be like, okay, these people are solving this problem, but that's not the right way. There's a simple approach. There's a better way to solve this problem. There's a way that makes people's life better. Just like what he did, he saw that people are charging too much for stuff, and he made something that will solve the problem for free. It's the same thing. When you now look at an idea, like, okay, this thing is connecting via Bluetooth. It's not so close to people. Why not use cellular? Why not use Wi-Fi? Currently, uh, how many of us here knows about the, like, do we have business people here? How many of us here knows about the uh, industrial motors uh, industry, like stuff that are used in factories? Oh, okay, you do, right? Okay, so right now I'm working on a smart chip that you put on these devices. That's what I'm doing for uh, in, um, industrial matrix in Canada. You put on these on this, uh, factory models and then anywhere you are in the world, they can tell you if the temperature is too hot if anything is wrong in your factory, you don't have to do manual inspection. These things do these things and they report to you. You know when the temperature is too much, you have to replace a part. You know when this thing happens, you have to do this. So that's, that's just it. Now, when you look at something like that, you'll be like, okay, um, what is this thing doing? Is there any other thing that this thing can do to help people reduce their stress or to help people reduce how much work they do, because in that sector, I think people do a lot of hard work. So we're trying to get people to, okay, yeah, you work, definitely, but your work has to reduce, because people, we, we focus more on work, but why? We have to have time for families, have time for ourselves. So we're trying to create a way for people to work, and at the same time, still have time and energy to do other normal stuff. Then, uh, for business people, when you see a product and then you're like, okay, this thing is not working where I am, but it is very viable. People will need it. Like, uh, somebody was trying to pitch smart houses to me and I was like, no. Do you know why? Because, uh, okay, let me say it. Like, I don't like the connectivity model in the one they are trying to pitch to me. Because, uh, okay, smart houses are cool. We will definitely get there. But something someone told me is, uh, you've heard of smart cities. People have talked about smart cities when everybody, everybody doesn't even have uh, smart houses yet. But some people are already thinking ahead, like, we have to be there when it's the time. So that's the thing. That's how, uh, that's how you have to, to invest in anything, actually, that's what you have to think. Like, this thing is going to come. But how do I get ahead of it? Like, how do I stay there? How do I claim that name before it gets here? And then uh, the last thing is uh, the smart diaper. Okay, I'm showing, this is not my product actually, but I'm showing this product because I don't like the design. So, um, <laughs> this is a Opronine smart diaper and it's an advanced smart diaper because it uses Bluetooth um, and uh, it, it reports directly to an app and the parents can see what is actually going on with the kid and everything like that. But uh, it's for kids. Why does it have to be like this? That's the thing. So for developers and people interested in IoT, this is one other thing that you need to look into. Like, you need to take designs very serious. I know kids that will not wear this thing. You have to, you have to make it appealing. Like, OK, when is this the diaper? It's like, oh, it's here. And then you would, like, and oh, you just wear it for the kid, and then the kid is happy, like, yeah, I have it. I don't have to wear anything else, like. <laughs> and by the way, I like kids a lot, actually. I currently have uh, a lot of kids that are my friend, like, and then I'm supposed to have a hackathon soon, some kids. Like, kids are very amazing. Somehow, I think me, or I don't know, maybe, Everybody here, or a large percentage of people here, are like a victim of the system. The system is fantad up. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> the system is messed up. That's the thing. You go to school, you learn, you work hard, you get first class, you do all those things, and then when you come out, you'll be like, okay, I want to get a job. You're like, you don't have what it takes. 
I mean, that's the thing. So I, when I see smart kids, I try to like, okay, no, don't be like that. You have to start learning something right now. And then I train kids a lot. So spending time with kids actually made me realize that uh, the mistake our parents did was, uh, okay, go to school, go do this, and that's why. If uh, they had done something like this, like, uh, okay, you're going to school, go to school, but uh, when you come back, if you want to learn anything, start learning. I, have, I currently have five kids that are between the age of 14 and 15, one is 14 and a few months, that eats Laravel for dinner. These guys are good, like very, very good. It took me two years to train them. So these guys are very, very good, like very good. So